Okay, how you doing there, YouTube friends and subscribers? Uh, this is a long overdue update on my VMAX tanks. 155 amp power solar batteries I installed in the uh, High Dollar Hobo, which has its official logo on it now. That got me quite a few thumbs up going down the road. Anyway, I've had these in here now about three months. I've put over uh, 8,500 miles on the camper since mid-August. I got back here I think on October 22nd to meet the insurance adjuster and these batteries have performed flawlessly. I have nothing but good things to say about them so far. So we'll go inside take a peek and I'll be doing an updated review on this Kamiko backup wireless camera also 8500 miles in. That's another video. Okay back to the batteries. There they are. These have worked out very well. They've given me more power than I need because quite honestly at night time I run my LED lights and occasionally I'll turn on the inverter which you've seen before. This is the uh, Go Power 1500 watt high surge and that is the uh, EP Solar 40 amp battery charge control, which has given me zero problems as well. Bang for the buck, I highly recommend that. As I do these batteries, and getting back to the batteries, uh, one thing I've noticed with these AGM batteries of immediate note was when I did use the microwave on the uh, coffee maker, my big L16 batteries. The uh, voltage up here on this little screen would go way down here and on this side it would drop into almost a 10 volt range and what that did was increase the amperage going through my 200 amp breaker. I don't know if you can see it down there. I should have brought a flashlight but I didn't and it would trip. Now I've been living in this thing almost two months as I was traveling around the country. And I think I only tripped that fuse twice. So that tells me these batteries are capable of discharging a whole lot of uh, amps without the volts dropping. Because they don't trip the switch. And uh, if you're probably watching this video, you probably watch just in case solar power videos. My friend down there in Australia. And he's changed over to AGM batteries years ago. And I have to say, from now on, this is be the way I'll go. Don't necessarily know if I would use these batteries but an AGM battery is its head, heads and, and tails above the uh, flooded lead acid. I don't have to mess with them. There's no venting issues. I don't have to put distilled water in them. I don't have to make sure I do an equalization charge. They take a beating. They've bounced out of that little container down there several times. You just put them back in. No issues. Another thing I noticed with my current setup you can go back into some of the other videos. I have the inverter where it plugs into this plug right here. And this plug goes over to my where the old battery compartment used to be. And I can, as I'll demonstrate right now, plug the camper in if, it, if it's plugged in outside. Yep, that's the click. Now what that does is that, lighten, that uh, livens up the entire camper. That being said, the downside of this is it also turns this converter on. And that converter uses a good bit of juice. In the daytime, not a big deal. But for a test, one night, I had the inverter turned on and I plugged my laptop in it and I let the laptop go all night. And as I said, normally you're just using my, my LED lights. However, when you're using the converter through the inverter, you're throwing AC power into the converter, which then takes AC, converts it back to DC, and at nighttime, I think it even tries to charge its own batteries. So having done that, in the morning, it was the batteries were down to 12.5, uh, which 12.6 is 50% according to this. So they're around 50% charge. And I've got 500 watts of solar on the roof. And up in New Hampshire, it went all day with everything unplugged. And I mean everything just by this. You'll hear a click when I do it.
and that little flash it's now off the converter now I'm running strictly 12 volts which is the way to go anyway at 12.5 volts they took a whole day of the 500 watts on my roof charging and they never got to a float mode however the next morning by 11 o'clock they were in the float mode and uh, it tells you right here for one battery the 155 amp hour batteries they recommend 225 to 500 watts so I've got 310 watts with 500 watts of solar and uh, normally they never go that low but if they do go that low maybe if I was back here in Florida they would do it in a day but it takes a lot of power to charge them up and like I said compared to the flooded lead acid battery they seem to discharge power a lot more efficiently also so I'm sold on the AGM batteries so would I recommend these VMAX tanks so far yes I would very happy with them and as I said uh, there's just really no maintenance so keep your connections clean make sure your fuses are in and life is good so that's my 8500 mile update Traveling around the country with the VMAX, VMAX tanks, solar batteries. Those are the SL-155s. I got two of them. And I got to tell you, I'm loving them. Absolutely no issues with them. So that's the upgrade update on the uh, VMAX tanks. They're pricey, but they're worth it. I got those on eBay. They were $599 for the two of them with shipping. So... I think they're worth the money. All right, this video is getting long, so I'm going to uh, sign off. And uh, thanks for watching. Hope this helps somebody make a decision which way to go if they're going to uh, use batteries in your RV. Thanks for watching.